Good evening. My name is Jennifer Reed, and as co-chair of Lyme Connection, it's my pleasure to welcome you all here tonight. This is our ninth annual Lyme Awareness Month conference for patients here at Western Connecticut State University. And I want you to know how much all of our volunteers, all of our exhibitors, our speakers, and our friends here in Connecticut are grateful to you for coming to this event. We really appreciate seeing you and we appreciate your support. And we also know that many of you came from quite a distance. We've spotted Canada, Missouri, uh, California on the sign-in. So we know that the need is great and we always, every year, come away from this event with great ideas for next year and great plans because it's so important that we all stay connected. Last May, when we gathered here, we were excited to tell you about our organization's new name, Lime Connection, and our new website. This year, we're happy to announce, happy to announce, excuse me, I've been talking too long today. Happy to announce that Connecticut's first Lyme prevention bill is nearing the legislative finish line. As of yesterday, we now know that funding for Senate Bill 207, an act concerning funding for a Lyme disease prevention and education program, is included in Connecticut's budget for 2016. First time, first time. We have two more hurdles. The budget has to be approved, and then our governor has to sign it. But I can tell you that this has come farther than any bill trying to fund prevention that we've ever started before. Yeah, that's pretty neat, that's pretty neat. <clears throat> and the reason is largely that so many of you wrote to your legislators, you went to Hartford with us, and you helped in, in making this a, a really nice unified effort. It's people on both sides of the aisle are supporting us up in Hartford. And interestingly now, when we go up there, we don't have to tell them our stories as much anymore because they're telling us their Lyme disease stories. And that's, that's the change we needed. We needed their friends and family members, their children, to experience what we experience. And that is what is truly making the difference. I just want to thank the senators and, and representatives who sponsored the bill because they've really stood out in the crowd uh, in caring about our needs. Senator Dante Bartolomeo, Representative Diana Urban, they are co-chairs of the Children's Committee, and our own uh, local Senator, Mike McLaughlin. Yeah, that's pretty nice. <laughs> so awareness isn't only improving at the Capitol. We've had announcements about new support groups, online teleconferences, Facebook pages, and lots of regional events this year, filling all of our inboxes. Today, we're kicking off our new Twitter account. Celebrities are taking a bite out of Lyme, and research, researchers, well. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, we love what you're doing. Uh, and the researchers who are studying this topic are um, demonstrating that our concerns are valid and our symptoms are real. Lyme Connection is committed to raising awareness, improving education, and sending you all as much good news as possible. We all deserve it. We've worked hard for this. And we thank you for your contributions and your encouragement throughout the year. We thank our volunteers, and we thank you for joining us every year and making us really proud to be a part of this group. Now I'd like to introduce Karen Gaudian, who's the co-chair of Lyme Connection, and Karen is going to kick off our program. Good evening. I am Karen Gaudian. Uh, I have to say this is our 12th year as originally the Richfield Lyme Disease Task Force and now Lyme Connection and it's our ninth year here at WestCon, which it's unbelievable that that much time has passed. Um, tonight we are paying tribute to a woman who has d devoted more than 20 years of her life to improving the lives of Lyme patients and their families. Listing Pat Smith's many accomplishments as president of the National Lyme Disease Association is a challenging assignment. I encourage all of you to visit the LDA website and read about the history of Lyme disease, 
the dozens of programs, projects, and bills she may be working on at any given point with groups from around the country. There is no more committed advocate for our cause than Pat Smith. We first met Pat in the spring of 2003 when we invited her to our first Richfield Lyme Disease Task Force meeting. Jennifer and I had reached out to leaders of established Lyme organizations for help with the endeavor. We knew nothing about the politics of Lyme. All we focused on was that our families were sick and we believed the community needed more information about these diseases. I remember being amazed that the president of a national Lyme organization responded to our call for help and drove from New Jersey to help two women she'd never met in a small Connecticut town maybe she'd heard of. She was generous with her time and knowledge. She shared with us as we began our own journey into the Lyme world and she has been there for us ever since. In 2004, we spent countless hours with Pat and other Connecticut groups organizing a legislative hearing up in Hartford with uh, then Attorney General Richard Blumenthal and the Connecticut Department of Health. For months, she met us in Hartford to help develop a program that covered all the issues and assured this included the voices of physicians and patients who could truly speak to the heart of the matter. Charges against our beloved pediatrician, Dr. Charles Ray Jones, brought Pat back to our state in 2005. Pat was in the courtroom as Dr. Jones began his defense and continued to make the trip to support him until the verdict was read over a year later. We stood with Pat outside the gates of Westchester Medical Center where she led a protest against the IDSA guidelines in 2006 and we supported her efforts to contribute to Attorney General Blumenthal's highly publicized investigation into possible IDSA antitrust violations that same year. There have been successes throughout this journey as well. We were thrilled to celebrate the opening of the Lyme and Tick-Borne Diseases Research Center at Columbia University Medical Center with Pat and Dr. Brian Fallon in 2007. Pat and Greenwich Based Time for Lyme were instrumental in raising the money for this program and we will be forever grateful for that. In 2009, I had the great honor of working with Pat and Maggie Shaw on HB 6200 an act concerning the use of long-term antibiotics for the treatment of Lyme disease. I will be forever grateful for the day support, daily support and guidance she provided throughout this experience, fine-tuning language to help, helping us rally support from across the country, supporting us as we navigated through the complexities of the legislative process. This bill would never have happened if it hadn't been for the incredible amount of time and support she provided. The legislation protecting doctors from attack by state medical boards for treating those ill with Lyme disease was one of the first to pass in the country and led to many more similar bills being passed into law. Pat is a powerhouse with a compassionate heart, fearless in her commitment to do what's best for Lyme patients and families. She tells it like it is and lets lets you make the decision. Amazingly, she has accomplished all of this as an unpaid volunteer. Her courage will always be an inspiration for me and she will ever, forever hold a very special place in our hearts. Despite her reluctance to receive this, in re sorry. <laughs> Despite her reluctance to receive this award, we insisted she allow us to acknowledge her accomplishments here tonight. Joining us now, our LDA affiliates, physicians, friends, co-workers, who have traveled from as far away as California to honor Pat on behalf of Lyme patients everywhere. I'd like to invite all her friends to come stand with us while we give Pat her award.
This is for you. This is a culmination of letters from people all over the country, some who are here and others who couldn't make it. And your dear friend Leah has been working <laughs> overtime putting this together for us. Jennifer actually has a little something to read for you. Stand over here, Pam. We'll oh. take a picture with your. Um... Oh. You have the helmet. Oh. I do. It's my green folder. Okay. We have we have two things that we would like to read. Pat Pat has many friends in high places. One of her biggest fans is rest representative. Christopher Smith from the 4th District in New Jersey. <clears throat> there is no one more deserving of Lyme Connection's first ever Courage and Advocacy Award than Pat Smith, founder and president of the Lyme Disease Association. During my tenure in Congress, I have met few advocates who can match Pat's combination of courage, tenacity, knowledge, skill, and compassion when advocating for patients with Lyme. Pat's decades of work in educating policymakers and the public have been instrumental in the fight for fair treatment of Lyme disease patients. I began working on Lyme disease after Pat, a constituent of New Jersey's fourth congressional district, first approached me after a town hall meeting in 1992. She asked me to get involved with Lyme disease and we hit the ground running. That year we met with the two top medical of officials at the NIH and CDC to express our concerns over the spread of tick-borne diseases in our state. We raised questions regarding the apparent ineffectiveness of a month-long antibiotic treatment for a sizable portion of Lyme disease patients, those suffering from chronic Lyme, which the CDC then and still today refuses to recognize. 23 years later, some progress has been made, but much, much more must be done. The courageous advocacy exemplified by Pat has never been more challenging and more necessary. <clears throat> Pat is known as one of the top experts on chronic Lyme and is sought after for her expertise. She has been invited to speak about vector-borne diseases at numerous federal agencies, including CDC and the Environmental Protection Agency. I have personally had the pleasure of working with Pat on policy and legislation efforts to advance research into Lyme disease, provide more accurate diagnostic tools and treatment options for those impacted. This year, I've reintroduced the bill as H.R. 665 legislation which establishes a federal tick-borne diseases advisory committee to better deliver results for those living with these illnesses. To accomplish this goal, we take the politics out and put the experts in. The committee will ensure that experts like Pat and patients such as those served by LDA and Lyme Connection have a seat at the table when decisions are made that affect the health of the Lyme community. These are just a few of the endeavors that Pat and I have worked on, and the list is long and continuing. In some, our work on Lyme at the federal level would not be possible without Pat's continuing efforts. While this award is a great honor, there is not enough that I or the Lyme community can do to acknowledge Pat for her tireless commitment to this cause. She has spent decades defending the rights of Lyme patients to be given helpful and accurate information, to be treated by Lyme literate physicians, and above all, to have en enhanced options in dealing with this debilitating illness. Christopher Smith. <clears throat> and we have one, one more. <clears throat> and the second thing we wanted to read is from Dr. Raphael Stricker uh, in California, who took to writing poetry about Pat. 
You take center stage, microphone in hand, part hurricane and part booming band. Ready to fight for Lyme patients everywhere, Pat is our hero, a breath of fresh air. You spar with the stuffy CDC and IDSA, you cast your shadow across the USA. You lobby the reluctant FDA and Congress, you fight like a tiger to hear the word progress. You expose Lyme hypocrisy, you promote Lyme democracy, you fight for Lyme patients everywhere, Pat is our hero in a stream of fresh air. So now we raise our glasses to Pat, the best of the best, and much more than that. You have worked wonders for Lyme patients everywhere. Pat will always be our hero, a storm of fresh air. as my husband back here of almost 47 years will attest to, I'm not usually speechless. Um, <laughs> but I will have to say, I used to think that Karen and Jennifer were nice, real people, but now I know they're very sneaky. And this was done many months ago when they invited me to speak, and no one said anything about an award until someone called me up a month or two ago and said, you're getting an award. And I'm like, for what? <laughs> and well, you're getting it in Connecticut. I said, no, I'm not. I'm speaking up there. And then I wrote them very indignantly. You mean I'm not speaking? <laughs> but I certainly appreciate the honor accorded to me today with this award. However, accepting it for myself does not seem right when there's so many people across America who can have courage that I can never hope to achieve. But I will accept it on behalf of them, the hundreds of thousands of chronic patients who've been battling over the last 40 years with a disease that is not accepted, not recognized, sometimes not curable while battling the physical pain, emotional turmoil, financial devastation, political constraints, corruption, dogma, and egotism, they are often forced to endure the skepticism of friends and sadly at times, family members who may not only be skeptical but also downright cruel. To them, I offer this award as positive reinforcement to hang in there, to keep fighting, and to always know they are not alone, and that together we have made and we can continue to make inroads into the secrets of Lyme disease. And believe me, there are many secrets. Many people have used their own experiences to help others afflicted with Lyme and to help scientifically advance the field of Lyme and other tick-borne diseases. These people are the advocates who have Lyme disease or are caregivers for someone who has it. They already have an extra added weight, and they have to reach deep in their souls to not only find the level of courage to personally battle all the ravages of Lyme, but also to reach even deeper to help their fellow man. The present and past members of the Volunteer-Run Lyme Disease Association and their affiliates are certainly great examples of that. Sadly, some people eventually succumb to their disease, but their courage lives on. Several people I knew have left this world fighting, some of them close to me and my family. Dr. John Drool, an early pioneer who treated Lyme and spurred research into the disease. Liz from New Jersey, a mother who battled congenital Lyme in her child and later succumbed to her ravages herself, all the while working with the LDA to find a cure. And most recently, my dear friend, Dr. Liz Heininger, who went from being an active young woman to a wheelchair, to partial mobility, to complete bodily shutdown. 
yet who continue to crusade to lead the Corning New York chapter of the Lyme Disease Association, even when she could barely communicate. Then my daughter, the innocence and dreams of her childhood shattered by a stealthy, insidious invader with no remorse for what it had done, leaving behind remnants of its dirty work throughout the body and fleeting, shadowy memories of what life was like before Lyme. Her great courage in the face of personal adversity has enabled her to overcome the difficulties of the disease and become a productive member of society with a good education, a job, and travel opportunities. Yes, I'm here to tell you that over time, it is possible for Lyme patients to have a life in spite of their disease. So I ask all of you today, please, Honor all the people with chronic Lyme and applaud the courage they display every day of their lives, struggling to take part in the simple pleasures of life, activities that healthy people take for granted. After almost 32 years of activism, I sometimes get discouraged, but I think of Liz Heiniger and others like her, and I ask you to do the same. We cannot let their work be in vain. So I remember their courage, I shed a few tears, and I move forward with borrowed courage from them to put an end to this terrible disease sweeping our country, all the while trying to influence those in power who have chosen to turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to the suffering around them. So I thank you, Karen and Jennifer, two of the very devoted advocates, for this opportunity to tonight, not to honor Pat Smith, but to honor chronic Lyme patients everywhere. And for them, I ask you to applaud. Thank you.